G'day guys, welcome back again. If you saw my last video, you'll know that my Elmer's glue oil has arrived from the States. I'm in Australia and we can't buy it here, so I ordered it on Amazon Australia and I got free shipping. There's a special you can do with Prime. So I ordered it and I wanted to give it a go. Oh, I'll show you the one that I did before, just in case you didn't see it. So I'm not going to go through everything again. I'm just going to get straight into it. That was it there. So really happy with it. Mainly this side here. Love this. This one, I've got a few too many cells. So I'm not going to torch as much with this one and see if I can go a little bit better. And a couple of my blues I felt were a little bit thick. So I've added a touch of water to my navy and a touch of water to my mid blue. My navy still feels a bit thick. That's the consistency there. You can see it leaves a mound. That one leaves quite a um, big amount, so I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it. It's a few drops. I just use tap water. So my mix today is the glue and water, as I've done before. But as I said, I'm using the Elmer's glue all, and I've just put it in here, squeezy bottle. 65% glue, 35% water. I just use normal tap water. I just fill up my bottle once it's empty and just use tap water. So nothing special there. And I have one part of that pouring medium to one part of my global impasto paints. It's quite a thick paint. I'll get a little stick and show you. That's it there. Quite a thick lovely creamy glossy paint so uh, as I said 50 50 to glue mix to paint so these cups have each got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint uh, I'm not going to go through all the colors again I've got black and white a dark a mid and a light blue I have sprayed the inside of my cups lightly with this silicone spray and I've wiped it with a paper towel just to get the excess out, just to help the paint release from the cup. So, for cells, the treadmill silicone, it's 100% silicone. If you can't get this brand, just look for 100% silicone oil. I'm sure it'll be just fine. And I'm doing three drops in each color, except the black. One, two, three. Hopefully it'll be better this time around with my two blues not as thick as they were. I just found them a little bit too thick for that last pour. All right, that's three in each. And I'm going to stir them five times. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Because it's quite a thick mix, I can stir my paints quite well without worrying about over stirring. If you don't stir them enough, the silicone, you get big blobs of silicone, and then when you tilt, they stretch, and I think that's how you get caterpillars. Right, so let's get to layering. I might see if I can do three layers. See how that goes. Make smaller layers. And see if I can get three. See what the difference it makes. So I've gone dark, light, dark, light, dark. Loose. This navy still feels a bit on the thick side. Oh well. I've added three lots of water to it, but I'm not going to add any more now because I've got my silicone in. I did make up an extra 10 grams of white. I really like the way those cells in the previous one had the little white rings around them, so instead of mixing up 50 grams of pouring medium to 50 grams of paint, I did 60 to 60, just to have that tiny little bit of extra white. And some more black. See what this does actually, whether it gives a better look or a worse look with having three layers. As I said, normally I do two layers of paint, but let's just see what happens with three, eh? Smaller layers, thinner layers, I should say. Might work, might not work. But I do like to experiment, don't I? So the the white is a little bit thicker because I've got a little bit more of it. 
Okay, so that's two layers, and I've still got enough, yay, to do a third layer. So that's good. I might even have a tiny little bit of black left to pop on my corners. I'm not going to make the black too thick because I don't want the paint to actually have a bump to go over. So I'll just thin that out there where it so the paints can go easily over the edge. If your paint's really quite thin, um, you can tilt it and it'll have really good coverage. But if it's too thin, your cells won't hold. They'll be all they'll be huge as soon as you pour the paint out. Their cells will be quite big, and uh, you know that if you're going to stretch them, they're going to grow even bigger. So something to be aware of. You want small cells to begin with that you can stretch out. If your cells are too big, then you're probably not going to be very happy with your pour because everything will be stretched out if they start big. They'll just get bigger. So try and make little cells to begin with that you can stretch out to be bigger cells. I find I'm happier with the result I get that way. Oh, that worked well. Three layers of each colour. Let's go with the navy again. So I bought eight four litre bottles of this Elmer's Glue All. We can't get it in Australia. I don't know why, because we can get the school glue. So I don't know why they can't just send us both. I did email them and they said, we don't send Elmer's to Australia. And I said, well, you do because we get the school glue. We just don't get the glue all. But they didn't answer me to that one, so don't know. Right, last of the blues. Lovely bright blue. As I said, I've got a navy, a mid and a light blue. And then for contrast, some black and some white. You don't have to use black. You can have, you can use navy instead for your, your dark colour. I always like to have a dark and a light and then three colours in between. I find I get the best cell definition that way. Now this one I am going to drag. I'm going to see what happens if I drag because if you saw the last one I just flipped it over and I had a big sort of puddle there and then nothing here and a big puddle here and then nothing there. So I'm going to drag them just well, a little bit of a drag and see what happens. See if I can cover more of the surface. This is my 30 by 40 centimetre card. Um, it's just a thick card. This one's 650 grams in weight. I don't know what you call it in the States. Maybe box bar, box board, um, mat board, something like that. It's just cardboard, really. It's thick, it doesn't really warp. It's a good thickness. I dry them flat and I get a tiny little bit of a bend in them, but not much. You can easily straighten it out afterwards once it's dry. Put something heavy on it or put it in a frame and hang it up on the wall and uh, it'll straighten up really easily. Mm, what can I show you while that's waiting? I can show you this little one that I did. Do you remember this one? Nice and dry now. My swipe. Um, I got mixed reactions from this one. A lot of people said, yeah, love it. Others said, it's too straight down here. Should have maybe, and I, I tend to agree, maybe I should have started here where the, the fringe is and sort of maybe made it a bit wavy. So I'll try that again because it is pretty straight, isn't it? But I think for a first try, I'm, I'm happy with it. Can't complain. So that's it. All right, this should have had long enough. And as I said, I did spray my cups with some silicone oil, so hopefully the paint will release nicely. Oh, wow, look at that. That's pretty. 
Oh, this one didn't do so good. Let's put a bit of paint back in here. And some here as well. Keep my little lines going. Should be alright. Should be able to cover that. Alright, now a bit of a torch. My butane gun here. Now I'm going to go quite high. I don't want to go too close and get caterpillars. Now I can see two elongated cells here and I don't get those when I just flip the cups over and let the paint run out. So straight off the bat that's something different with dragging the paint but you do get these lines so if you're in if you like those lines um, dragging certainly helps with those lines but it can also create these longer caterpillar like cells so nice and high up I'm going to turn this right down go around and around Going round and round tends to shake up the can though and I get flames. Alright, so that'll do for now. I don't want to over torch just yet. We'll see what happens with these first. There's lots of little cells come up here. I'll just wait a minute and see what else happens before I torch again. As I said, the last one in my previous video, I had a too many cells and it was just a bit too much. I like to see a bit of background. I don't want just cells. If you, if you don't have that many cells, uh, when you stretch, the, the cells stay in their round shape. Whereas if you've got a lot and you stretch, they kind of bump into each other and then they lose their round shape. They kind of, because they've all bumped into each other and there's so many, uh, they lose their round shape. See up here, I don't have that many and they've stayed more separate. Whereas over here, there's lots and they've all bumped into each other. So you can see what I mean by that. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more torching because I'd like some more just here. Actually, I might use my little one. Because the big one, it heats such a big area. I'm just going to use this little, little guy. That way I can put the heat where I want it to be. See how that goes. Give that a minute. So lots of cells popping up again. Where I used that little one, I got quite close there and I've got some caterpillars. I've got too close. So the bigger one, I think I prefer the bigger one, the bigger torch. It's it's bigger, yes, but I hold it up higher and it gives me more of a like a broad heat over the whole thing whereas the little one I have to aim it in one particular area there because it's so small I'm going to aim it into there and, and then I get this caterpillar type thing so anyway let's torch uh, not torch let's tilt I need to go this way first because I've got a lot of blank areas down there so I'll do that area first rightio let's go I have got less cells this time and I have covered the surface more straight up with my drag that I did. I don't really like that, that's quite muddy. That was the extra paint that I put up. So I'll probably try and get rid of some of that. I prefer not to use the extra paint if I can possibly help it. It's because it is a bit more muddy. Let's see if I can take the weight of the paint down to that corner there. Get rid of that corner. Bring it back. So far so good. That worked. 
All right, let's turn it around. Clean that up. Don't slide off. Okay, well that's looking better. Just having my, those two blues a little bit thinner has worked well. Now, whether I can get up here, let's see if I can get that way. I'll go zigzag up and down. But you have to watch what's going on up here as well. You don't want to overstretch up here. side. Not quite enough paint. Let's go down to this corner just a little bit. Just a touch. I don't mind the black being there as I've said before. Don't mind that at all. Although there's some kind of a little weird stripey thing happening there. See if I can put some black on it and just cover it up a bit. Won't play too much with it. Now I'm gonna I don't want to stretch this too much. I'm gonna put my hand underneath and see if I can just get the paint to go over to the sides a little bit. getting over to that corner there. And back. Okay, I think that will do. Happier with that one. The middle has gone a little bit muddy, a little bit muddy for me, but it's not too bad. Maybe I should take the black out and put in have the navy as my black and then have white and navy instead of black and white and then have my blues because the, the black does tend to be a little bit muddy but it's not bad, it's certainly not bad and those cells are better, I haven't got as many and the ones that I have got have grown nicely I'll show you the difference See up here, there's just too many of them and they were all squashed together. Whereas here, um, it's better, they're more separate. I could do with some more in there. I'll torch a little bit in there where this black haze is. Oops. A little bit in there where that white is. will pop up. I don't want a lot. Just a few little ones like I did previously. They are there. Let's see if I can stretch these that way a little bit. I don't know if I can. No, I don't want to. Take the risk of ruining it. I'm happy with that. Got two matching paintings here. So Happy with the glue all. It's really pretty. Uh, what can I compare it to? Mm. I don't have another glue one here handy, have I? Let's have a look. Oh, I can't, can't find it very quickly. Okay, so cells popping up, little cells popping up here where I had those blank areas. Still got some lovely background, got the light blue here, got the grey through there, got splashes of white, I'm happy with that, I've got lots of white. I could even add more white actually, because it's, it's still quite dark painting. Let's take you in for a close up. I 
think, as I said before, I do get a better result when I don't drag it clean out cells. See these here? These are just beautiful over here. It's just cleaner. This one, you know, it's a little bit more, more muddy, I think. What do you think? Do you have a preference? But uh, yeah, the cells are gorgeous. Happy with that. So whether it's just, whether it's the Elmer's glue, glue all, or whether it's just me, <laughs> don't know. Combination of both. Let's go in for a close up. There we go. So as I said, lovely cells. A lot of them have got the white rings around them. I haven't got as many white rings. Now that could also be because my layers weren't as thick. The first pour had two layers of each paint and this one had three layers of each paint. So straight away the layers are going to be thinner with the three layers. So maybe a little bit more muddy because I had thinner layers. Maybe that's it. Could be because the layers are thinner, but um, overall, they're both lovely. So thanks for watching. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll see all my pause and you won't miss a thing. Right, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.